hair is soft. It's like a girl's. By God, it is soft. Now, how do you get it that way? See, this old stuff of mine, it just, well, it's just like old barn hay. There ain't a darn thing you can do with it. How do you, how do you get it that way and keep it like that? I clean up real good. He was licking me! But fate turned four women into friends. If your laws don't include me, well, then they just don't apply to me either. Four friends into fugitives. Stop! I'm your huckleberry. guy from Real Gems Reviews. Welcome. Today we're going to discuss 90s westerns. Not the best 90s westerns, just good 90s westerns. Two of them we decided. And then we decided also to throw in two bad 90s westerns. Ones that weren't so good. So I'm going to start off this time with my choice for a good western from the 90s. Again, not the best. Most people would probably say Unforgiven was the best western. Well, some would say that. Yeah. I may disagree, but yeah, that's it, another It's the only one that won Best Picture. So, if Hollywood's deciding the best western, it would be Unforgiven. And, yeah, it was a good western. Maybe not the best in our opinion. Mm. Hmm. But it's still a good western. No, it's a great movie. Yeah, it is a great movie. Clint Eastwood. Here's my choice. My choice for not only a good western, but a really underrated one. Ravenous. 1999. Excellent movie. Starring Robert Carlyle and Guy Pearce. And a cast of many, like Jeffrey Jones. Have a walnut, boy. Neil McDonough. <laughs> David Arquette. The over-medicated private please. <laughs> Jeremy Davies. He was licking me! John Spencer and Steven Spinelli. Saying his name, right? Something like that. Yeah. Spinelli. Spinelli. Steven Spinelli. <laughs> it's a unique Western, not your standard Western. It's not like shootouts in the street at the OK Corral or anything like that. There's no deserts like your most, like, again, like standard westerns. We had to make certain rules, like Back to the Future 3 would have been my first choice of best 90s westerns, only it's not really technically yeah, I don't a western. Really see it as a western. They have to time travel to become a western, and it's not really a western. Like, uh, there's certain rules. Anyway, the only that takes place in the 1800s, I guess it's considered a western. Because there's no other western. Well, it also has to take place in the west. It takes place in the Sierra Nevadas. Is that the That's in the west side. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's on the west side of the map. So it can't be in the north. That'd be a, technically a northern, wouldn't it? Uh, I know that's true. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Ravenous falls into that, I guess. The focus is all around cannibalism and how by eating human flesh will actually make you stronger and even extend your lifespan. Guy Pierce plays a soldier during the Mexican-American War, who's reduced to serving at this outpost in the Sierra Nevadas. That's where he gets to meet all of the other outcasts who were sent to this outpost by the United States Army, who are basically sent here to man this outpost for the Army. Usually it means if you did something stupid or bad and they don't like you, they send you to this outpost to do dumb work. Like with David Arquette's character, who's perfectly cast by the way. 
as the dope head of the group. Anyway, one night a man is discovered outside. And after being nursed back to health, tells everyone the tale of how he escaped from a Donner Party-like group of settlers who had to resort to cannibalism after they ran out of food. And then a few members of the group started going crazy and killing one another because they liked the taste of flesh so much. Janus was the first to be killed. And then Mr. McCready. Because it was making him stronger, he became addicted to it. So Robert Carlyle here escaped from that group so he wouldn't get eaten too. I'd do the same thing. Yeah, <laughs> most people would. So anyway, the next day Robert Carlyle and the others set out on a trek to find these cannibals and see if any of them are even still alive. Only, when they get there, they find out that the story that Robert Carlyle told them wasn't exactly accurate. Because he, too, has become a cannibal madman. And that's where the movie really gets good. Because now he's resorted to lowering people to their death just so he can eat them. And become stronger. And live forever, I guess. So basically, they have a near superhuman cannibal man on her hand. And wow, what an intense film this is. Robert Carlyle definitely steals the show. Even though there's a lot of good actors in this. With great performances. And of course, Guy Pearce, who's great in the few movies that he gets to be in. And then another underused actor. This was actually also the first time I ever saw Robert Carlyle. Prior to this movie, 1999. I can't remember. I never saw the full Monty until... Uh, it was a James Bond movie. He played the role a lot like Murdoch in the Guy Ritchie. Crazy and laughing about that. There was definitely something a little off about him. Like at first, like, unkillable too. They shoot him and he just like rises back up. And... <laughs> he's a great villain. Creepy as hell and a lot of things that he's in. He's a villain a lot actually. He's one of those we always cast him oh, as yeah. villain type actors. A reliable villain. And I definitely want to mention the soundtrack to this movie. Especially the scene on the top of the mountain right where he's about to jump off. <laughs> Excellent score. I do recall the soundtrack being very unique. It's an awesome, awesome soundtrack. It's like an off-putting guitar riff. Yeah. And it was also well directed by a director named Antonia Bird, who died a few years ago, actually. So rest in peace, Antonia Bird. I believe I'm saying her name right. So yeah, it's not your standard Western. But it does take place in the 1800s in the West, so it's technically a Western, and I think it's really underrated. Most people probably don't even know what the hell this movie is. They might have no. heard of it, but they've never seen it. And it's a lot awesome. of people who have seen it don't particularly appreciate it. Yeah. It can be dark and heavy. It is an acquired time, taste, I yeah. think. It does feature cannibalism as its main plot line. Yeah, there's so, a yeah. good amount of cannibalism. Yeah, so. if you can't handle the cannibalism thing, you probably shouldn't. But it's a great movie, and if I'm on my rating scale, I would give it, of the five stars, I give it a I give four and a half stars. It's almost pretty hard to break. Western. Yes, I love this movie. Well, I also and thoroughly enjoyed this film. I thought it was both incredibly entertaining as well as extremely unique. Uh, not only in terms of the story, but also as well as the setting of the film. Like, you don't see a whole lot of films taking place in that particular time frame in the Sierra Nevada. Uh, I also really enjoyed the cast and how they did their performance. Particularly, as you would mention, Robert Carlyle. I think Robert Carlyle stole the show. Great job as Colonel Wise. The man pulled off very creepy. Give it three and a half stars. Really enjoyable. So we agree on this one. No fighting. We yeah. agree. One of these days we're going to be beating each other up and yeah. really disagreeing. Well, right now, I can't help it. Ravenous is yeah. a pretty good flight. I knew we'd agree on Ravenous. So. If you haven't seen it, highly recommend it. Really good cast. Mm. So for my good 90s Western film, I chose the extremely popular, and perhaps, in my opinion, could be the greatest Western of the 1990s, the movie Tombstone. Oh, hell yeah. So Tombstone is the epic tale of Wyatt Earp and his family who travel to Tombstone, Arizona, where they set up shop and try and let's start a new life for themselves. For a while, though, it's all pretty good, but his happiness is soon cut short when both him and his family are forced to contend with the evil Clanton gang and their associates, which eventually would come to a head at the famed gunfight at the OK Corral, and we all know what happens from there. I beg to differ, sir. Don't win, kid. And in my opinion, I think this has definitely got to be one of the top five greatest westerns of all time. And hell's coming with me, you hear? Hell's coming! 
Perfectly paced, well written, very well directed. A lot of people say that Kurt Russell was actually more of a director for this film than the actual that. guy. Like, Kurt Russell was the man in charge, really. It was never official. He no, probably would never but, go and say it, but... This movie will mostly be remembered for uh, Val Kilmer's performance oh, yeah. as Doc Holliday. Definitely Val Kilmer's still the show in this one. Not Jason Priestley. No, he Jason he Priestley did, did a good job, yeah, though. Yeah, did a good job. He I did appreciate show, Jason though. Priestley. Everybody did a good job in this movie. Even Lowell from Wings did a great job in this movie. <laughs> And Billy Bob Thornton. Billy Bob Thornton was in it. Even Charlton Heston shows up. Ah. Yeah, definitely a great cast. Uh, Michael Bain did a great performance. I was just fooling about. I wasn't. Yeah, yeah that's like part, part of the best part is their feud. Yeah. Val Kilmer. The Val Kilmer Michael Val Bain feud was definitely Bain. a highlight. All right, longer. Johnny Ringo. Let's do it. You were just too high strung. I wasn't. I also loved uh, Powers Booth. Over the top, like probably yeah. nothing like it was in reality, but no, no not at all. I'm sure it's very, very not. Oh yeah, no, no, no. no, no. I don't think that really happened. I think Tombstone is a perfect western, and I give it five out of five. So five out of five. That's what I give. Top western. Perfect western. Tombstone. I pretty much agree. Pretty much like the same reasons Val Kilmer. I'm your Huckleberry. Steals the show. Mm -hmm. Even Powers Booth as an over the top bad guy, like I said. Like, I think in real gunfights, they're not laughing and joking the whole time. Like, he no, does but shit, but it makes it hilarious and perfect. He does add some entertainment to the movie, though. Yeah. And without those performances, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be a unique Western at all. Yeah. So I do agree. And almost give it to five. Again, four and a half. Still pretty good. Mm -hmm. I think there are very few people out there who wouldn't think Tombstone is one of the best. Can't disagree again. See, one of these days, I'm gonna hit that Beat you to shit with this freaking gun just because we disagree on one. But now we're gonna get to the shit ones. Oh boy. Two bad ones. And what's your bad mm -hmm. one? Well, first, we just said these out of the blue, too. I hadn't seen these movies. We had seen them, but it's been like. Yeah, over well, one of them I didn't actually see. Yeah. I just assumed it was gonna be bad. And yeah. Like, some of them, if, if I had seen it, it wouldn't have mattered. I've totally forgotten these movies. It just, I just don't remember them being good. Maybe not necessarily the yeah. worst ever, but... Not really a whole lot of fondness yeah. for these ones. So, my choice was Johnny Depp in that movie Dead Man. The black and white one. I think it might not be so much bad, but simply weird and forgettable. Is what I would call it. It was definitely weird. Yeah, weird. And trying to figure out what the hell exactly is going on. It's suggestive a lot of it. A lot of metaphor, really. Yeah. Like when I first saw this years ago, I forgot everything. When I watched it again, I was like, I don't remember any of this. Even though it had tons of good actors in it and great performances, like, which is the best part of the movie, is the actors and their great performances. The movie's all about Johnny Depp's character running from the bounty put on his head by Robert Mitchum's character, who's like a rich tycoon guy who runs this steel mill in this town called Machine. Yeah, that's the name of the town. That Crispin Glover takes him to. And yes, he plays a weirdo. And does this to remind you of when you were in the boat? He plays a great weirdo. Like them shooting at the buffaloes and shit. What is that? What was that about? Yeah, they're just <laughs> target practice. And just gonna like, murder a bunch of buffaloes from the train, yeah. you know? A bunch of mountain men. Hey, you need a hobby. Yeah. <laughs> I know why they're extinct now. Yeah. So anyway, he put this bounty on his head for killing his son, Gabriel Byrne. In self-defense, though, when he walked in on Johnny Depp having sex with his former girlfriend, or I don't think they were married. No, maybe they were engaged. They were, they were an item. Yeah, yeah, a couple. Yeah. He caught his former love banging the Deppster. Yeah. He tried to kill Depp, Depp but she, she jumped in jumped. front of it and got killed herself. But the bullet went through her and wounded Depp, stuck inside of him, so he wasn't totally dead, but he was definitely wounded. Man. Yeah. Pulled out his gun and shot, like couple of times before he actually yeah. shot and killed Gabriel Byrne and then took off on a horse. Not just any horse though. Robert Mitchum's Pinto. Also stole the very spirit of the valuable horse. Bring him back dead or alive as long as his corpse is here. No, I reckon dead would be easy. And my Pinto too, his horse. Not his car. Didn't have cars back then. Robert Mitchum is good in this stuff. I give him that. For, for an old final Robert Mitchum performance. I don't think it's his last performance. It's one of his last yeah. ones. 
The hunt is on. And that's when they bring in the three bounty hunters, played by Lance Henriksen, Michael Wincott, and this guy who, who plays the kid. I don't know who the hell he is, the actor. Um, not, not really a big deal. He gets shot in the back of the head anyway. It doesn't fuck him. His character's pointless. By Crazy Lance Henriksen's character, who, again, he probably steals the show here because he has this memorable scene where after killing everybody, including Michael Wincott, is eating Michael Wincott's hand because, like in Ravenous, he's a cannibal too. And I thought they were joking because they mentioned it earlier in the movie, like you said, with the parents. Yeah. Like, yeah, he ate his parents. But he, no, I guess Lance Hendricks yeah. was a cannibal in this movie. Yeah. And Michael Wincott still trusted him. I mean, he was creepy as shit in the first place, yeah. so. <laughs> I, would, I would have been the hell out of there, too. But they're all kind of degenerate pigs and assholes yeah. in this movie. Which is the one thing about this movie that I did notice is no decent human beings in it. Most yeah, of them are just really degenerate really. pigs. Maybe some of those Indians were nice, but none of them talked enough. I mean, Crispin you know. Glover was probably the most decent person. All right. That wasn't even yeah, much and again, role. he was just driving the train. Yeah. What the fuck was his deal? They never showed him again. But, but yeah, everybody was kind of a dink. Mm. Except for the Indian guy. Yeah, the fat, pudgy Indian guy. He was probably the most likable, decent character. He was just like a fan of Johnny Depp's character. Yeah. And he was helping him out, carrying him across the West, trying to not get killed by all these bounty hunters, trying to murder him. Mm. Another gross scene. You remember when uh, Lance Henderson steps in that guy's head? Yeah. He steps yeah, in a yeah, dead guy's him. head and just squishes like Who's a belly. Who was I didn't know if that's realistic. I know, is that, or that like... possible? <laughs> Just step on somebody's head and squish it like a mouth. Easily melon. squish it like a big rotten pumpkin. <laughs> Disgusting. Man. Well, that scene with Billy Bob Thornton and Iggy Pop was kind of funny, actually. They're Iggy just... Pop in a dress. Yeah. And Billy Bob Thornton, like, all impressed with Johnny Depp's hair. Now, how do you get it that way? See, this old stuff of mine, it just, well, it's just like old barn hay. There ain't a darn thing you can do with it. They all end up getting killed though, because they're all also a bunch oh, of degenerate boys. pigs. <laughs> but I'm not even sure if the Indian guy was real. He's the one who killed Lance Henriksen too, so. He sails off in a fucking boat out to the open sea. And then dies. And then, I guess, dies. Yeah. But it's like, I was wondering if he was supposed to be dead the whole time, because I've read theories people thought he was in purgatory the entire movie. But Yeah, I never thought of it. I mean, the movie is definitely heavy with metaphors. Yeah, and so. artsy, fartsy, film noir type. Yeah way of making it, filming it. Still, it wasn't a bad movie. Uh -huh. It was uh, confusing, particularly at the end, with that, is he dead? Was he dead the whole time? Is this is suggesting that he's dead? I don't know. Uh -huh. Make up your own mind there. I'm going to go with the purgatory thing because that would explain why everyone in that universe is a piece of shit. Like, you never saw any regular people. Guy walking down the street, just doing his regular thing, family of kids, nothing. Just, like, shitheads the entire movie. Even the law was just pretty much not mm. present. But since it wasn't a bad, bad movie, I didn't totally shit on it. I give it like two and a half stars in the end. I guess that's fair. Yeah. I personally thought this movie was kind of fucking boring. Basically, I saw it as a combination of First Blood and Oh Brother Where Art Thou. Yeah. But it didn't really have the emotion of First Blood and it didn't really have the charm and comedy of Oh Brother Where Art Thou. So it was like a bad mishmash of just basically Johnny Depp just going on a series of clips through the woods while he's being hunted down by Han Lance Hendrickson. I also notice there's way too many close-ups in this movie. Oh yeah. Like you don't really get to see what's going on in the outside world around their characters because there's always a big close-up on the guy's Johnny hand. Depp's face. You can see every hair in his mustache. It's kind of a weak plot really. It was just Johnny Depp slowly dying in the woods being tracked down with a weird Indian guy helping him out. It wasn't as bad as I remember it. In my mind it was well, like... Well yeah I do remember it being a lot worse back when I first saw it but... Might have been the mindset I was in. I was like well over a decade ago that I probably yeah, saw that. I probably just so. didn't understand it as much, but obviously the director was trying to go on some weird metaphorical journey. Yeah, that's what it felt like. Like he wanted to be on an odyssey or some sort. And I also thought it was just overly gory and gross for no reason whatsoever too. The like, head squishing scene, yes. I gave it one and a half stars. And that was mostly because of the cast, because it really did have a really good cast in that movie. To me, it was not a particularly good film. If you did notice, it did have Robert Mitchum and Billy Bob Thornton, mm -hmm. who were both Bob also Thornton, in Tombstone. Among the pall bearers at his funeral were early Western movie stars William S. Hart and Tom Mix. Tom Mix wept. A far better Western. Okay. So move on to your bad one. Well, for my subpar Western of the 1990s, I chose a movie that I've never seen before, but I just assumed that it wasn't a very good movie, and I was pretty much right. The 1994 Western, Bad Girls, directed by Jonathan Kaplan. I have no idea what else he's done.
And it stars Madeline Stowe, Andy McDowell, Mary Stuart Masterson, and Drew Barrymore. Madeline Stowe, Mary Stuart Masterson, Drew Barrymore, and Andy McDowell. The only way they stand a chance is to stand together. And the story centers around Madeline Stowe's character. You touch her again, you're a dead man. Who's wanted a fugitive on the run with their former prostitute friends as they traverse their way to Oregon to start a new life while making friends and enemies along the way. A woman like you would be happier shopping someplace else. So I guess mostly this movie was slightly better than I thought it would be. I was expecting Uriel Schiff Fest, but it did really have its moments. But for the most part, I also see it as kind of a rip-off of the uh, Young Guns movies. Like, remember those? The stylized westerns with the hard rock soundtrack? Didn't pull it off as well. He did have Dermot Mulroney, though. Oh, well, that's something, Who was in Young Guns? Yeah, that's about uh, it. I'm sure he'd rather be in Young Guns. I mean, it wasn't really boring, but it just not much of a plot going on. It was just four prostitute, fugitives, on the run from the law. What would I describe this? I would describe this movie as a series of rescue missions. <laughs> um, it starts off with Madeline Stowe. Madeline yep. Stowe being hung up by the town and her friends have to rescue her. They stampede through town, they rescue Madeline Stowe and then eventually Andy McDowell gets arrested and she's thrown in jail so they have to go and rescue her. Do I look like a criminal? And then they rescue her and then eventually Drew Barrymore gets kidnapped by James Russo, so they have to rescue her. So it was just one rescue attempt after another. Um, really bad action scenes. Mm -hmm. A lot of time it's just simple stunt work that's over-exaggerated, like Drew Barrymore mm -hmm. getting pushed to the ground, but it's all slow-mo and like... Rrr. They had one scene where they were ambushing James Russo's gang, and they were shooting out at everybody. And now one of the girls hit anybody. Like, every shot they fired was a complete miss. And it was just so cheap ass. There was explosions going off, but it was just not hitting anybody. And nobody got hurt through the whole thing. I stand by you. I stand by you. I mean, these are just, they were just really half-assed action set pieces. Did you notice um, the town at the beginning? No. Back to the Future Was it the Back to the Future one? Mm -hmm. oh, was a Back waste of a set. Back to the Future 3 set, yeah. <laughs> Being reused. Um, basically, my favorite part would be uh, James Russo's character. He's I the agree. only one who actually Holy tried shit. to make this entertaining. <laughs> He's a good villain. Okay. He is very charming and fun. and <laughs> He laughed through like yeah. every line he said. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. That makes sense. Really. No, I think he did a really good job. <laughs> every time he said something, that's what he was doing this during the line. Underused actor again. But, uh, James Russo at least tried to add some entertainment to this movie. Andy McDowell eventually gets settled down with some guy. Like she fell in love with the farm guy, right? Andy McDowell? Yeah. Yeah. He was Blade from Bucky Brewster at Three Party. Really? <laughs> Where have I seen this guy's face? I, I looked him up. I see you in hell, Johnny! Oh! She lived with him, and then the rest of the bad girls moved off into the sunset. And that was Bad Girls. So all in all, I'd give it two and a half stars. I mean, not the worst movie, but I like the cinematography. I like some of the creative camera work. They did some good shit with that. The landscape looked nice. But yeah, all in all, kind of a snooze fest. Sort of generic is what my feeling was towards it. Just a generic Western, and their one thing that was making them possible to stick out was the fact that they had that all-female casting. Which, yeah. you know, well, that was pretty much their selling point, really. Yeah, their selling point, but they didn't really... That's why it was it. called Bad Girls. Yeah. I mean, they were more believable as, like, strong female character. They were more believable than some of the newer ones. Yeah, yeah. Because like, they could they could be good at sometimes it could kick ass like Madeline Stowe's character, but she also she's getting her ass kicked through the whole yeah, movie I too. Yeah, I mean, her rape at one point, I think. It could have been worse. They could have had like Drew Barrymore doing kung fu shit to like yeah. ten guys at once and shit like that. But like, they didn't like overdo that. Yeah, it wasn't over exaggerated, but they went that whole sawmill planet we were supposed to do. Yeah, they were trying to get. They should have just done that as their story because that would have been more interesting. Seeing they them. never even reached the sawmill. Yeah, it never even happened. I mean, never, supposedly there was no it, sawmill. It they were supposed to buy a sawmill. They never did. Yeah, I think it ended with the three of them riding off to do that. But that would have been a more interesting plot. Is yeah. it's, it's like four women trying to make a sawmill, sawmill happen, happen in the old should. west. That would have been, been a fight a bunch of Colonel Sanders asshole type fucking white guys. Yeah, would have been a cooler movie. And then James Russo's character character can still oh, be he can still show up yeah. and be the Help asshole him out even for a while and then turns on him because he's a big dick or just always be the big dick mm -hmm. he's like the competitor or something yeah i noticed there was an actor in it who was in my name is nobody really yeah he was the uh one of the gang members who was 
Drew Barrymore killed. Kept winking at her. Oh, 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 like a gross looking pig guy. I know the guy. He's a stunt actor in real life. And he was in like Robocop even. A brief cameo in all these, all these big movies like that. Well, that's neat. How'd you like to play with this? Like that? And you get to claim that he got killed by Drew Barrymore. Not many yeah. people can claim that. <laughs> For being a pig. But I did hear that when I was reading about the movie that uh, there was an original director, it was some lady, and they fired her and threw her whole script out hmm. and trashed everything that she filmed and hired that other guy that you mentioned, John okay. Kaplan. Maybe it had a better script. Yeah, who knows? Right? Maybe it was better. But Maybe it was the whole it. sawmill idea. Yeah, that would have been cool. But no. They wanted the more generic Western yeah, instead. They wanted young guns, but with ladies. Yeah, it was still better than that Ghostbusters with all ladies. <laughs> Yeah, again, it didn't turn out to be as bad as I thought this movie was going to be. I just thought, again, it was just a generic Western. And I actually agree with your stars. Two and a half you gave it? Mm -hmm. I did the same. Two and a half star movie. Two and a half stars. It had potential and it didn't take it. Oh, no, they didn't really have much personality. Yeah, like, I didn't like it when, what the hell, the Dermal Rooney's dying and she's reaching over to get her precious money for her yeah. sawmill and shit. Like, he was actually a decent character to go back and help. He, his storyline had they explained it a little better with the whole, it's kind of like a... Death Rides a Horse. Remember 15 years ago at the Mesita Ranch? Another time when you took it out on a woman? Unfortunately for you, that woman happened to be my mother. A little subplot with Dermot Mulroney. Yeah, which I didn't touch on a lot, so you didn't get, yeah, you didn't really get much out of that. hate Robert Loja as, as much as he did, which would have helped. But yeah, two and a half stars. Not as bad as I thought it was. Yeah, yeah I was expecting worse. Well, there you have it, folks. That's our... Best of, worst of 90s westerns that don't consist of the most, you know, popular ones you would think of, like, I guess Dances with Wolves is considered. Yeah, Dances with Wolves is definitely a western, yeah. definitely one of the better westerns. Also won Best Picture, I'm pretty sure. Mm. But yeah, no, I would consider the best western, though. We already just discussed that. Ravenous and Tombstone. Best westerns of the 90s, in our opinion, of course. As well as Bad Girls. Bad Girls and Dead Man as being most not likely as the bad, worst, but some some of the I'm sure there may be worse westerns of the yeah. 90s, but they were pretty low. It's it's no worse than Quigley Down Under or Far and Away wasn't bad. That's also considered a western to some people. Yeah, well, that was pretty Tom decent. Cruise one. Hmm. Get an honorable mention anyway. But I guess that'll do it for now. So until next time, folks. This has been Eddie Spaghetti of the Spaghetti Theater Review and Real Gems. From Real Gems Review. Real Gems, get the hell out of my theater. I don't want to. I All like right. it here. It's comfy. Okay. Guns aren't really loaded anyway. Good night, everybody. It was loaded. Uh-oh. You just got that guy. He worked here. <laughs> He's not moving. I'm leaving. I knew that would get him to go. <laughs> I kill somebody and he always run off. <laughs> Not everybody. I'm probably gonna run from the law now. I'm a wanted man! In case any of you folks are wondering why I only gave Tombstone and Ravenous four and a half stars, well, I guess I just don't believe that the 90s has a five star western. Alright, you know what? Fuck it. Sinbad and the Cherokee Kid is the only five star western of the 90s. And it was an HBO movie. Adios, folks. Hell's coming with me!